just do be aware that these things hold a rather sort of dangerous amount of power really uh, and you can see by the little flashing light down the bottom here that this is still live and active so even when you've got it out of the pack uh, it's still dangerous so I uh, don't put it on anything metal Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dubious Engineering. This is a specialised mountain bike battery. It's full of 18650s. It's quite dangerous. We're going to take it apart because this keypad here isn't working very well. Positive, negative, don't work at all. What's interesting is if you turn the power button on, like that, there's no LEDs on the display at all. But there is, is 40 volts coming out of the two large terminals at this end of the battery. So the battery is clearly working and charged up. So the battery is currently turned on. And if we put some meter probes across here, whoops, 40 volts. There we go, 41 volts on those two terminals. So that tells us that this battery is sort of working. Uh, first thing to do is remove all the little rubber plugs that come in the side here. There's a row across the bottom and there's another row across the top. And then what we're gonna do is remove these two large hex bolts. And that should give us the ability to remove this fascia plate here. Wow, look at all the mud in there. Someone's been using this on the mountain trails. So having taken it apart and giving it a little bit of a clean up, you'll notice that one of the support struts has broken. But uh, bah, that's not an insurmountable problem. Uh, right, next thing to do is put a knife blade through this sticker. And then in the side of the battery, where the rubber bungs were, are a bunch of standard posi drive screws. Each screw has a little bit of green gunk underneath the top of the head, which I can only assume is related to waterproofing to reduce potential water ingress. The next part of the mission, there's a support tube bearing that sort of, well, it's more of a bracket than a bearing really, uh, but that needs to be pushed through. Boink, and pulled out, there we go, lovely. <laughs> and as always, it's at this point I find there's another screw that I haven't undone. Right, come on. And with a little bit of a gentle persuasion, the battery comes apart. Now, watch out. There is a little bit of, uh, of a red gasket sort of seal inside here. Uh, so pull this side off first. There we have it. Okay, so the side the side with the holes in it. And there we have it. We have a set of lithium ion cells and a really interesting looking BMS on this side. Here are the uh, buttons. Let's, um, let's see if we can get to those. Yes, we can. A bit of an Obama. A yes, we can. And let's have a look at this. Oh, wow, yeah, there's corrosion actually all around these. Uh, well, uh, let me put my glasses on and I'll get you a bit of a zoom in. But yeah, this looks like there's corrosion all around here. Just do be aware that these things hold a rather sort of dangerous amount of power, really. Uh, and you can see by the little flashing light down the bottom here that this is still live and active. So even when you've got it out of the pack, uh, it's still dangerous. So uh, don't put it on anything metal. <laughs> Make sure. Make sure there's plenty of insulating surfaces for this to go on. All right, let's have a look at this guy here and see if we can figure out what's going on. Yeah, that's that's definitely looking a little bit corroded there. I think it's time to get some cotton buds out with some alcohol. So the batteries that are in this pack are the Chinese LGEBM J11865 series. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they've got loads of power in them. I always tend to sort of like prefer Japanese, but uh, there are two runs of 18650 staggered and uh, yeah, this pack produces 40 volts uh, when it's fully charged. And at the end here, you can see a little Bluetooth module, which is quite interesting. 
Yeah, very cute. It's a lovely little battery pack, aside from the fact that uh, it's ingressing water um, and other fluids that are causing corrosion uh, to the control PCB here. So the next thing we need to do is have a look and see if we can gain access to this control PCB, give everything a bit of a clean up. The other thing about this PCB is it is on a high flex Sumitomo cable here. Um, so yeah, we're going to have to be really careful uh, about this because it seems like it's glued in place and prying it off probably isn't going to be the greatest idea. All right, let's make this a little bit more interesting by introducing some isopropanol <laughs> alcohol into the mix. If you look at the PCB here, you'll see what looks like coffee stains, uh, little tiny coffee stains, muddy water, ultimately. Let's, um, let's just remove yeah the, the, the muddy water has ingressed this battery and i'm proving that because i'm removing those stains from the pcb uh, the good news is uh, if you look at the pcb you'll see these sort of shiny areas here they've effectively put a little bit of varnish over these sort of shiny areas here is they knew that there's going to be some ingress so they've put varnish all over the pcb i mean come on um just make the just do a proper job of the the seal of the battery anyway let's see if we can clean up this pcb here It can't be a single layer, it's got to be a dual layer PCB uh, because the ribbon cable is going into the other side of the PCB. So it's a dual layer uh, PCB, which is a little bit scary. And, and, and clearly the, the problem is, is the water has ingressed into the underside of that PCB uh, where the power switch and, and various other buttons are and it's down underneath between the ribbon cable between the battery pack um, and the ribbon cable and the PCB and there's a bunch of corrosion in there which is which is definitely causing some issues I'd love to get this PCB off but it appears to be glued in place which is a little bit worrying because if I start trying to pry there's a high risk that I might snap the PCB or break one of the tracks in the PCB. This is a, a little soldering iron uh, what I've done uh, so you don't have to put your thumb on the capacitive sensor I've um, put a little bit of um, tape a little bit of silver foil and tape over that uh, and what I'm going to do here is just sort of retouch uh, some of the solder joints on here. They, to be honest, they probably don't need it, but but I'm keen to just put it, apply a little bit of gentle heat. And this soldering iron only produces a gentle heat to some of these joints uh, in a in a in a vain attempt to try and fix this. Playing with this Sumitomo cable, uh, giving it a little bit of pressure inwards and outwards uh, seems to have helped maybe the situation a little bit. Uh, just now everything lit up like it like it should do. Oh god, I really don't want to do this, but I can see the whole PCB um, rotating there. If you if you look at that, that's definitely glued down yeah yeah that's glued down that's good news it's glued down okay let's see if we can get this pcb off carefully just really carefully sliding a knife blade and, and you can see it's going in there hopefully you can uh, you can see that it, it's it's getting under there and just really really timidly working your way around the PCB and a little bit of gentle sideways pressure you can hear it starting to to come off you can see it starting to move on its axis now uh, let's see if we can address it at the other end here we really need to be so careful about how much pressure we put on this this battery is incredibly expensive and it would be lovely 
if I can fix it for my friend. I'm just going to keep very carefully working my way around the battery with this knife blade, which is probably not the best tool for the job, but but a, a plastic spudger maybe would be a much better option. This is dubious engineering, so don't do what I do. Learn from my mistakes. But yeah, we're 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 we're, we're making some. Oh yeah, look at look at this. Yeah, we're we're starting to. You can see it's starting to 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 peel off now. Um, so I'm just going to keep working my way around this. Just check that it still works. Yep, still sort of does its business incorrectly. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's let's keep on working that off. <laughs> and boom! All of a sudden, it flipped off. <laughs> flipped off. But yeah, you can see that uh, you can see that cable here. Uh, so we should be able to just very carefully. Uh, and, and actually, if I look at that cable, that there's there's almost there's, I don't believe I can see any corrosion. Let's just make sure you're sort of in focus here. But I can't actually see any corrosion that's got underneath here. So if I'm honest with you, that end of the cable doesn't look like the problem. Oh boy, oh boy! It might end up being this end of the Sumitomo cable here because this actually this end is the end that seems to have had quite a bit of. Uh, water ingress. In fact, the whole thing's just had a shed load of water ingress. But there's putty all over, all over this Sumitomo, all over this connector here. Uh, and apologies if I'm using the wrong terminology. Sumitomo may be a brand name of of this type of cable. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's just go ahead and reseat this um, reseat this cable. Yeah. Okay. So there we there we go. We've got the we've got the cable off that looks absolutely immaculate if i'm honest with you while i've got the pcb out i thought i'd uh, go ahead and give it a slightly harsher rubbing and we're gonna dice it in a bit of alcohol and just give it a really good old scrub <laughs> here's the other thing is uh alcohol uh, reacts with the sticky and Actually, that's really quite nice because you can pull all of that old sticky off, that double-sided tape there, uh, and you can replace it, happy days. So, all right, I think we're making some progress. Um, <laughs> it looks it looks like this PCB may be working now, uh, but the problem that I'm having is this little tiny piece of plastic which sort of held this little cable in place in this tiny little cable clip here. Um, uh, just, uh, yeah, really, really hard work to, to, to get it all sorted. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just bolstering this cable with a little bit of, um, a sellotape, uh, so that, um, I'm just going to make it thicker and thicker so that all of the contacts are effectively made. So now if we turn it on, you can see all of the lights now stay on. Uh, happy days and when we turn it off all of the lights turn off yeah all back on we can adjust power settings to maximum yeah uh, we still can't reduce power settings there's still a problem with this with this switch here and here we go folks check it out so i can now go plus i can go negative i can turn the battery off and i can turn the battery on Absolutely marvellous. Everything appears to be working. Happy days! Just found myself a little bit of carpet tape. Uh, we'll cut that down to an, a size that sort of makes sense. And we'll use that to stick the PCB back in place. And at the same time we're doing that, what we'll do is we will just put a little bit of tape over that connector as well. Uh, just to make sure that that connector holds its position nicely in place. So uh, just a little sliver of said tape over the connector there. And that'll just hold everything in place. And this is good tape. So that in theory, let's just make sure it's going back in about the same sort of position. 
Oh, okay, folks, here we have it. Power on, minus, plus, power off. Oh, here we are then, folks. Look at that. All nicely lit up, reassembled. Turn it off. Turn it back on. Currently set to positive. Maximum assist. Negative. Negative. Yeah, it's it's definitely a lot better than it was. Happy days. Right. Uh, positive and negative are working. Uh, let's just make sure that uh, output is still working while we've got it turned on. And yeah, 41 volts on the voltmeter. So yeah, that's all looking good. We might have a happy customer tomorrow. Well, folks, that turned into a busy workbench. But I'll tell you what, I'm sort of reasonably happy that this is all doing what it says on the tin now. Uh, everything lights up, positive, negative. All that kind of stuff works. Turn it off. Yeah, happy days. That's a thousand pounds worth of battery almost for uh, an e-bike, a specialized e-bike, but uh, a, a mountain bike. But yeah, cool. Glad we got it sorted.